Hey YouTube, how you doing? I am back with our review for Married at First Sight. We are on episode seven, so we are getting right along in this process. The show, the show starts off with um, the show starts off with Trey and Vanessa. Uh, Vanessa decided she was going to go meet Trey for lunch because she's off and he's working and she wants to spend time with him. He appreciates that, you know, Trey is, as we know, is a luxury car salesman. So in order for him to make money, he has to sell the cars. So she was a little disappointed that he took the work call while they were out. And, you know, and for him, like he said, that's his MO that, you know, he has to make the money. He takes work call. He works, he works long hours. He works some holidays. He works some weekends. So, I mean, that's just the life of a salesman. She did say in her confessional that she did understand it, but it was still was a little disappointing to her. Neil has decided that he was going to surprise Samantha by cooking her dinner. He got her flowers. She came home. It seems like they're making a turn in the more positive direction. They're talking, um, explaining some of the, you know, quirks that they have had. They're glad that they're building Nilla Samantha seems to be making a turn for the better. Um, David came home early. It's Ashley's finals day. He decided that he was going to cook her a meal. Uh, we know that she's vegetarian, so he made some spinach, some kind of something pasta. He asking dog, the dog for instructions on how to cook this stuff. He got his computer, his laptop. He's a typical man that does not really know how to cook this type of thing, but he put in a great effort. Um, all for her not to show up. He thought that she was going to get home at 7. Turns out she got home around 9 o'clock. Turns out that her final was a time final and it ended when it ended. It took a little bit longer. She has a longer commute in the house that they live in together. Um, all in all, she should have called her text in my opinion. But, you know, he did not go for the gusto and get upset he let her explain they had a nice dinner she brought him a cupcake um she says that she made she's making precautions for this marriage to work because she's not working she's just going to school and um working on the marriage in my opinion actually really isn't working on the marriage but that's what she said and that's what she's doing so that Trey and Vanessa get to meet with a sexologist. I never remember any of these experts' names, so I apologize, guys. I really, really, really apologize. But they got to meet with a sexologist. So first she meets with Vanessa. Um, she asked them how she thinks we're going. they were going and living together. She says living together seems to be pretty easy. Um, she's a little concerned that they use separate bathrooms. Um, she, they, she was asked if they consummate the marriage. She said yes. Um, they waited a little bit, but you know, they're comfortable in that aspect. So when she interviews Trey, um, Trey says, you know, sometimes he has a hard time reading the signs. Sometimes that he might feel like they want to be, he wants to be intimate, but he's like, oh, well, maybe she had a hard day. Maybe I should just roll over and go to sleep. I have that same problem because my husband's like, because I work in the service industry and he works at nine to five. So he's like, oh, you were tired. Blah, blah. I'm like, God, ask, do something. So I, I understand where Trey comes from, where Trey is in that, and I experienced that. But it's just something that you have to work on yeah, that's together. Um, um, she gave them the fishbowl that they always use. Um, she was pretty pleased in how their relationship was going. She did ask about the separate bathrooms. Trey was like, he just thought it was being, you know, courteous. But, you know, it's just one of those things when you are new to, what, they're two and a half weeks into the experiment. Um, new to somebody, you know, those are some things you're just going to do by yourself, you know. But... They could at least brush their teeth or he could have his stuff in there and they could take turns in the restroom. I really don't understand the whole separate restroom thing, so don't let me get to lying to you. So, the experts go and visit David and Ashley next. David is, she was worried about David because David, through this whole process, has been so positive and so patient and so willing to give this process a try where he has Ashley who's more standoffish. She wasn't attracted to him. She can't get over that. Um, she appreciates him, but not so much. So she had a talk with them. And to me, the talk really went nowhere for David and Ashley. Um, she gave them the fishbowl assignment. 
Next, she spoke with Neil and Samantha. She brought across a, quite a few things to Neil that Neil needed to hear that Neil is not communicating his views on the marriage to Samantha, um, that he needs to assert himself not only to, to keep Samantha from railroading him, but also to let her know where he stands and how he can be the head of the household, per se. Um, it was non-productive for every couple except Trey and Vanessa. Since Trey and Vanessa have already been intimate, it was fine. Since Trey and Vanessa are open to sexuality, it was fine. Some of the questions the Van Vanessa was a little shy about or Trey was like, really? This is what y'all asking? <laughs> you know, but they went ahead and they went through the assignment, you know, and everything was all good. David and Ashley, oh my God, that was just like... David tried so hard. Like, he would ask a question, and she's like, I'm not going to answer that. He was like, well, no, you don't have to answer that. I wouldn't, like, I think one of the sex was, where would you, wouldn't have sex there, or what would you like to? And he was like, I wouldn't have sex in Philadelphia. I mean, come on, get into it. Something, Ashley. But Ashley was not having it in the least. Girl, girl, why did you get married? I say this every episode, because she is so, I mean, I understand having a brick wall. But her brick wall is unbreakable. She does not want to give up anything. She wants to move so slow. You're going to move so slow that you're going to be at the end of the experiment and getting a divorce with a great, from a great guy because you would not take the chance to get to know him, to talk to him, anything. Ashley, God, they're doing the fishbowl experiment. Of course, they are in the, kind of in the same boat intimacy-wise as Ashley and David, you know, they barely hug and high five and they joke a lot, but at least they're more cordial than the other two because even though know, Samantha has her her shade up, she kind of peeks through it. But regardless of that, so they were asking some of the questions and Samantha was like, I'll, mm, I'll pass, mm, I'll pass, or they would answer them. It, it was really, it just wasn't a good experience for them with the fishbowl either because she's still so guarded about trying to get to know Neil. Um, awesome. David and Ashley, David is so sweet, guys. Instead of being all disappointed that Ashley refused to answer the questions of the fishbowl product, he did project of the fishbowl project, he decided to um take it a whole different route they were going to put fish in the fish bowl so they went to pet smart they got them two little fish they got them a little castle the little marbles they introduced them in there and in ashley's confessional she was like she really appreciates that he puts her feelings first and foremost they come first but I and mean, to me i feel like she's a little bit of selfish because i think she should try to reciprocate the feelings that he the way that he does, the way that he treats her, I think she should try to reciprocate it in some effect. It's kind of like me, 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 my, 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 I, 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 in my opinion. Um, David is so ready for this marriage to work. He's like, oh, Ashley checks off a lot of boxes. I'm going to be patient with her. Still the same old scenario in his confessional, but I feel like he's being taken advantage of. I don't know, maybe it could just be me, but I feel like he's being taken advantage of. David and Ashley decide they want to go on to a date night. They go to ride the Ferris wheel in downtown Atlanta. They seem like they've been having a good time. David has never been on a Ferris wheel and he plans this romantic date. And they get on there in the first go round and he's like freaking out because it's windy and the thing is shaking. And then the second go round, he decides, okay, this is his moment. He's going to give his wife a kiss. He tells her, hey, hey, they're joking, laughing, whatever. He's like, hey, turn around. And she comes out and she's like, I was like, he was like, come on, give me a kiss. She's like, I did. And he was like, that wasn't a real kiss. I think that was like the turning point for David because he was like, I understand moving slow, but something has to be wrong. You need to, <laughs> she need to tell me what's going on, what's wrong, because it's not going, we can't fix it if only half the people know what the problem is. So, I feel so, so, so sorry for Paul Lolo, David. Um, Vanessa and Trey, their friends come over. One of Trey's friends, his actual roommate, a guy he works with, and one of Vanessa's friends. They're having a little dinner party. Well, I mean, just having dinner and 
getting together. They're playing commentator. They're having a good time. His friends and her friends, they get along well. The couples, are, the couple themselves, they're getting along well. I feel like they are progressing. If they don't stay together at the end of the show, it's going to be a real shocker to me. But they have been the saving grace of the couples on this show because they are so into each other. They're so willing. They're giving this experiment a try where everybody else is Samantha. Whatever. So, Neil Samantha are in the house. Um, it's an older house. They don't really like it. Um, things are starting to fall apart or fall down. So they've made the decision that they're going to move. Now, this is where I disagree. Okay, you don't like the house. It's a bad commute. You, it's falling apart. Move. But why move to Sam's house? They're moving to Sam's house, which Sam stays with her best friend, her roommate. Rather than to move to Neil's house, which Neil stays alone until they decide what they're going to do. Sam is manipulating the situation to get what she wants to be in her house so she can be controlled. We already know she's a control freak and she railroads Neil. Neil, this is the one time that you really should have put your foot down and said, hey, no, we can decide what we want to do, but we let's do that at my house where we still have our privacy and we can still get to know each other. But no, Neil didn't do that. Um, so that was our show, and I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I will see you guys next week.